Welcome to my first video of the new year. In this video, I'll repair, refinish, and do some upholstery work on this pair of chairs. I actually started working on these chairs over a year ago, but I've gotten sidetracked with other projects and just finished them up recently. This is a pair of mid-century chairs with solid walnut frames. As you can see, the seats need some work. When I got these chairs, the foam cushion had deteriorated and had basically just turned to dust. So I'll have to put some new foam in there. The finish on the frames is in bad shape, mostly in this area where they would have gotten handled a lot and the finish has turned into a dark and dirty, sticky mess. The frames have a lot of loose joints that I'll need to re-glue. I began by disassembling any of the loose joints so that I could re-glue them. This joint here was held together by a combination of dowels and a screw, but the screw is hidden behind this plug. So I needed to remove that plug to get the screw out. On this particular joint here, I was able to get this joint separated without taking the screw out first. The screw really wasn't gripping the wood much anymore, and the glue joint at the dowels had failed, so it came apart with a few taps from a mallet. Here you can see the screw and the dowels. On this one, I was able to get the plug out just by giving the joint a few taps with the mallet. And since it was so loose, that caused the screw inside to push against the plug and pop it out. Some of the joints were loose, but not loose enough to come apart easily, so I had to use a heat gun to soften up the glue a little bit so I could get it apart. And as sometimes happens, when I was trying to take this joint apart, the frame cracked. So I had to be really careful not to crack it any further as I took the joint apart. And then later, I was able to just glue that crack back together pretty easily. And here's what I was left with once I got it all disassembled. The backrest was held on to the back part of the frame by screws that were underneath some plugs. 
Some of the plugs were missing, but the ones that were still there came off easily. The backrest was held on by two screws in the middle that screwed into threaded inserts in the backrest, and then on the outer ends were two screws. Next, I glued the cracked frame back together. First, I disassembled it even further by taking the top piece of the arm off. And then I used a syringe to shoot some glue into the crack. And I taped it off first just to help keep glue off the surrounding wood to help with cleanup later. And then I glued the top piece back on. And clamped it up. The finish on the chair frames was very thin, and on some parts, especially on the arms, it looked like there wasn't even any finish left. So it wasn't too hard to remove. I used a combination of scraping and sanding. And then I could glue the frames back together. Gluing together chair frames can be tricky, and it's always a good idea to do a dry run where you assemble the frame without any glue, just to make sure everything is going to go together as it should. And then once that's all good, then you can apply glue and glue it together. And then I could glue it up. Although you can't see it here, I do have shorts on underneath that apron. So I did this in the summer, although I started the video in the fall and then continued in the summer and then finally finished them this winter.
and I made sure not to forget to put the screws back in. I did need to make some new plugs for some of the screw holes in the frame. And to do that, I just took a piece of scrap walnut and a plug cutter and cut out some plugs. And then glued them in. and trimmed off any excess until the plug was flush with the frame. And then I could apply the finish, but before I applied the finish, I wet down the chair frames with some water and this will show me what the wood will look like with just a clear finish on it. And it looked great to me with just the water. So I felt like I didn't need any stain on this. So I just let the water dry and then I sanded the wood again because the water had raised the grain of the wood. So once that was sanded back again, I could apply the finish, which was just a clear Danish oil. Danish oil is relatively easy to apply. You just wipe it on and let it soak in for a little bit and then wipe off any excess. And I usually do that a couple of times. And in this particular case, I added a special step when I did the second coat. I took some fine sandpaper. Can't remember if it was 400 grit or 600 grit. Either one would work. And when the oil was still wet on the wood, I sanded it lightly with the sandpaper and let it soak in and then wiped off any excess. And this just gives it an extra smooth feel. And you do want to make sure to wipe off all the excess Danish oil or else it will get sticky if you leave it on the surface. But if there is any excess oil that was missed and it gets sticky, you can usually clean it off with some mineral spirits. Next, it was time to work on the upholstery. And this is not my area of expertise. I've done a little bit of upholstery here and there, but I've still got plenty to learn about it. So the way I'm doing things in this video may not be the correct way. I began by replacing the webbing this was some really old rubber webbing, and I couldn't find new rubber webbing like this. So instead, I got this webbing. It's called Elast Belt, and it's the same width as the old webbing. First, I had to remove the old webbing, and this is one of my least favorite parts of upholstery, is removing old staples.
And then I put the new webbing on. I didn't have a proper webbing stretcher, so I used this tool, which is a canvas stretcher for stretching artist canvas to paint on, and it worked okay. Sometimes it felt like it wasn't gripping strong enough. So if I felt like I needed some help keeping it closed, I used a vice grip. And then I cut out a new piece of foam and glued that to the seat. And then came the hardest part, which was getting the cover back over the seat frame. This was really tricky and took quite a while, but eventually I got it all stapled on and it looked pretty good when it was done. I didn't get a lot of footage of this step, mostly because I don't really know what I'm doing. So I don't want people to pick up any wrong methods from the video. And then I had to staple on this piece to the bottom. And then I could screw the seat back onto the chair frame. The backrest was in fine shape and it didn't need any upholstery work, so that could then be screwed back on to the frame. The final step was to go over the frames with some wax and fine steel wool. And here they are, all finished. Thanks for watching.